Hi everyone, welcome to WSO2 Tech Show. So today we're going to be speaking about blockchain technology. Now blockchain technology has been initially popularized by the decentralized uh, digital currency Bitcoin. Uh, but there are many other practical examples, practical use cases which, can use, which we can use this technology for. And I have a very special guest here with me today, uh, Srinath, who is the Vice President of Research at WSO2. Welcome, Srinath. Thanks. So, uh, Srinath is specifically going, going to be talking to us about the IAM use case. Srinath, so care to give a small explanation about it? So, so let me start telling a little bit what blockchain is. Right. right? And so let's assume there's this ledger, like, okay, when we think about the ledger, we think about this book that we keep accounts, right? Let's assume there's this ledger that cannot be changed, okay. right? You can, sorry, you can add things to it, but you can, whatever you write, you can't change yes. it. Cool. If you change it, somebody can look and see that it's changed. Right. Let's assume something like that is there. Mm -hmm. Now, such a thing would, uh, would drastically change how we would, we can trust each other. Right. So let me give you an example. Right? Let's assume we meet in some airport. We don't know each other. Mm -hmm. Right. So we end up talking to each other, and uh, you decide to buy hundred kilos of uh, tea from me. Right. Right. And you would pay me advance. Right. Okay. So the agreement is that uh, you pay me the advance. I go and send you the tea, and then you send me the rest of the money. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, now. In, in the current world, for this kind of transaction to happen, we need some kind of trust. Maybe at least we need to know somebody who, uh, somebody both of us know. Okay. Right? Uh, but in this world, right, if such a ledger is there, we could write down on the ledger saying, okay, this is our agreement. Yes. Right? So now what happens is, either you or me later can go and show, demonstrate to somebody else this agreement happens. Right. None of us can deny it. Right, correct. And the fact that give us trust. Yes. Right? Because if we if we break the trust, any of us can go and show that trust is broken. Right. So it's a proof of uh, transaction. Yeah, it's a proof of transaction. Right? So this is what blockchain gives. The blockchain is this ledger that uh, can only happen. You can't change. If you change it, others can detect it. Right. Right. So what happens is this open up many interesting use cases. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, for example, let's say I'm selling organic food. Right. Right. Now, of course, there is uh, like in a business like this, there is an inherent distrust. Am I actually selling the organic food? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Even if I am the honest guy who sells the authentic organic food, mm -hmm. it's a challenge for me, for me because the others may not trust me. So I might choose to use this ledger to for get everybody who in my supply chain to record what happens. Okay. Right? right. Now if you if you want to verify this at any point you could go to the supply chain, go to the uh, ledger, look what is there and go and talk to the person who wrote that part. Right. And verify that actually each of these part happens. Okay. Right? right. Now this suddenly let me create a trust that is verified and it might even change the, the how I am perceived in the market. Right. Correct. right. So there's a lot of such use cases. Okay. So Srinath, um, you spoke about a number of examples, practical use cases. So if I am to ask you, what is the most promising use case out of all these? So if I, if I had to choose one, I would choose this uh, identity and access management on top of blockchain. Okay. Right. Okay. So all of us have an identity, right? right? So usually this is issued by the government, right? And generally we trust the government to manage it. But I think last few years there has been this trend that a call for decentralized identity because there is a risk, right? right. For example, if you um, if you have watched this movie called The Net, mm -hmm. right? The, these identities that are controlled by centralized entities somebody who has access to that entity can go and change those things. Right. And if it happens, you might be in a lot of trouble. Right. Right. Because there's not, nothing else to, uh, there's no proof available after that. True. Uh, very, very hard. Yeah. Right. So the, uh, the people were worried about this problem for some time and, and blockchain actually give us a solution for this problem. Okay. 
right? So there's like, I'll give a brief outline of this solution. It has three parts. The first part is that you create a key pair, okay? And uh, think the key pair as your username and password. Right. Not exactly, but it's fine if you're trying to yeah. think that way, right? So you create this key pair, right? And then you go to authorities. The authority may be where you work or the, uh, the uh, identity department or um, uh, driver license department in case of US, etc. You go and you demonstrate you have this key pair. You actually don't give them your password if you think it's a password, but you show that there's, there's algorithms to, sh to show them you have it, but not to give it to them. Okay. You, you show them, show them uh, you have it, right? And they would issue you uh, what we call verifiable claims. Okay. Uh, think this as a letter signed by them saying, the person who has this key is so and so, and signed by them. Okay, now this is digitally signed, right? right. It's, it's not a paper, it's digitally signed, you get this token, okay. right? So you collect these tokens, right? And basically you create a website, uh, maybe private. Uh, uh, so you create this website and create Calculate the hash of it. Okay. The hash is uh, basically you take the site running through algorithm, you get this unique number. Okay. Right. right? Then you r go to the blockchain and write to the blockchain saying, I am this user, this is my website, and write the hash. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, later, if you want me, want to work with me and want me to identify you, you show me in the blockchain. So I looked at this, right? So, okay, fine. Now I know at this time you wrote this, right? Now I go into your website. I, I look at your claims. There's a claim saying this is Dimitri. Uh, you work for WSO2, etc. right? So now from these claims, I can verify who you are, right? right? All these claims, when the authorities in, um, issue them, they also write, again write to the blockchain saying I issue this claim to so-and-so. So I can again go and verify this. Right. Right now, now what happens is when this framework is in place, there's a decentralized identity and there are tokens associated with it. Okay. In an ideal world, we don't have to do any papers anymore. Okay. Right. Okay. If you want to go and apply something, you basically say, this is my ID. These are my claims. You are done, right? Okay. So, so uh, it'll, I mean, uh, there are a lot, a lot of infrastructure to happen before this full story to happen, okay. right? But but uh, such a world will be very different and very efficient. Right, yeah, completely paperless. Yes. Oh, yes. So Srinath, uh, you spoke about, uh, you used the example of a citizen's identity and then with currently being centralized, uh, where, uh, there may be the risk of it being compromised. Um, so with block, the blockchain technology and IAM use case and decentralization, uh, is there any risk of uh, that being compromised? Okay, so let me put it this way. Uh, so, uh, blockchain is built on top of these cryptographic algorithms, right? Okay. So, they are very, very hard to break, right? So, with the best technology we have, they take thousands of years to break. Okay. Right? So, uh, so when we talk about security, we say that the system is secure as the weakest link, okay. right? So, I think uh, the, in the blockchain case, the main algorithm is very, very secure and the any risk is at the edges where uh, the humans are in all, right? I mean, I can you lose the password or right. yeah. there are human errors, you can lose the password, etc. Uh, so, so I think, I think when you take the blockchain, the clearly the weakest links are at the edges, but not in the main algorithm. And uh, due to that, I would argue it's much secure than the other alternatives. Right. Okay. Um, so, now, so, um, in the, the Bitcoin uh, use case, I think it has uh, solved the double spending uh, issue. Um, and uh, so if I'm basically, uh, what is the benefit of uh, using IAM uh, in terms of uh, blockchain technology? Can, I mean, can't you use a database implementation, for example, like Core? Uh, so you could, right? right. You could. Uh, but the difference is, as we discussed before, is uh, this decentralization. Right, because the any most other implementations of the same problem, right? There's a lot of those around there. Right, right. There are one central party who controls that data, who can change it. 
Right. Right. But in this blockchain, uh, well, if you implement on top of blockchain, mm -hmm. if it's decentralized, nobody can change it. Right. Right. No, no, of course, not unless you have more than half of the people in the world to agree to change it. Right. Right. But at that point, it's not a, a, a secret anymore. So right. That's true. Think, yeah. Yeah. Highly unlikely. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. So that's all the time we have here today. And thank you very much, Srinath, for being here uh, for a wonderful explanation about the blockchain technology and the IAM use case. Uh, so if you want to know uh, more information, there is an article put together by Srinath and his team on the role of blockchain uh, in future integrations. Uh, the, uh, the link will be uh, along with this uh, video. So you can go and read. And also, if there are any questions, I'm sure Srinath will be happy to take them. You can leave them in the comment section. And most importantly, watch out this space for more videos. Thank you and goodbye.